All right, guys, so before I start, oh, I guess that's fine. Before I start today's podcast, I just wanna say that this might be one of the most illegal things that I do on this podcast that I actually tell you guys. So without wasting any more time, I'm just, let's just enjoy the next 15 seconds. What is going on my dudes and dudettes? It is David here and today we have a another episode of the RX podcast just diving into everything that's going on in the world of CrossFit. If this is your first time here, uh, my name is David and like I said, we talk all things CrossFit, everything that from news, reviews, all those things of that nature. Sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place after that drone flight, which I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, that was very fun to put together, but also could have resulted in me getting fined uh just because where i live there are a ton of restrictions on uh flying drones and i know it's not the most responsible thing to do but it's a new tool that i picked up uh, for filmmaking uh, and this is the mavic drone it's super tall small super tiny but uh it folds out into a 4k drone shooting beast um, and it's what I'm going to be, one of the things I'm going to be using to, you know, just kind of differentiate the kind of content that I'm creating on the channel. Um, because as I mentioned to you before, I'm, I'm, I'm making a little bit of transitions. Um, and, uh, which I have not given you guys a date for when the new podcast, the new, uh, series drops, which I figured out a name. It's going to be the, uh, create as prescribed podcast. Um, and that's going to be the series on the channel with all the other series, kind of like this one. Um, and that's just going to be diving deep into all these different creators and entrepreneurs in the world of fitness and CrossFit. Um, got some dope guests coming up uh, and looking for more guests to continue to interview. So uh, filming starts uh, two weeks or a week, actually. Uh, and I couldn't be even more excited. So make sure to subscribe for that. If you guys have not yet prescribed, first guest is going to be, I guess I'll tell you guys because I, I keep putting things um, so vaguely, but first guest uh, that we'll be having on the podcast is gonna be Tommy Marquez from the uh, CrossFit HQ media team. So for those of you that are familiar with CrossFit and the CrossFit media team, he's one of the hosts that hosts the CrossFit uh, update show. Uh, and uh, seems like a super cool guy. He lives here in the area where I live, which is the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's gonna be dope. Second guest is going to be um, uh, Jared uh, from uh, Cat and Cloud. He's one of the owners of Cat and Cloud. So if you're really into coffee and wanna learn a little bit more about coffee or wanna start your own coffee company, that's gonna be the podcast or video that you guys aren't gonna wanna miss. Um, so yeah, so this is just another tool that I'm gonna be trying to use to incorporate in that process. So guys, I'm super stoked. I'm really stoked. Um, I just, I couldn't be more excited about the direction that the channel is going. And uh, I know there's gonna be a lot of people that may not necessarily like that, but this is just the progress uh, that I'm going through. And I want you guys to be along with that journey. So there's gonna still gonna be like training vlogs, all of that stuff. Uh, but as far as, um, as far as uh, content, there's gonna be a lot more diversified content for you guys outside of just reviews and stuff. Cause reviews are expensive. Uh, I'm not sure if you, well, you guys are aware, but you know, if I'm buying a pair of shoes a month or doing reviews every single month, it adds up. And as much as I like to review and I like gear and I like all these new things, it adds up. And with something like shoes, you can only get so much value out of that. This, I can make my money back 
with this because I can use it for other projects and stuff like that. So um, that is that, that is like housekeeping stuff. So uh, if, again, like I said, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe this if you enjoy this podcast. I wanna actually include guests in this format as well. Um, but if you guys have questions and things like that, make sure to leave those questions down below. But let's go ahead and hop into today's uh, meat and potatoes because there's a lot of stuff that took place this week that uh, is very interesting. Uh, a little, I guess you could say controversial and I want to, uh, let's, let's do the light stuff first, then we'll hop into the heavy stuff. Uh, so if you guys didn't hear this past week, we got some new colorways for nanos. Um, they look okay. You know, to be quite honest, I'm not a huge nano fan. Um, outside I w of the fact that I won't deny that the comfort in these shoes is ridiculous. Um, but we got a few new gum bottom colorways. We got a olive uh, gum bottom colorway. Sorry guys, I'm looking at the shoes while I'm talking to you. Um, oh. My uh, my lighting's a little bit off, um, but we got some new co colorways. We got I think it's char it's either charcoal. Let me check this out. Uh, yeah, so it's sand beige parchment black, which I you know to be quite honest, I'm not I'm kind of digging these ones. Uh, as far as colorways go, we also got another. Uh, it's like pink. It's like rose. It's almost like rose gold. Uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, but we got a rose gold uh, or, or urban violet, noble orchard, ashen lilac, um, and gum bottom. I think that's, that's that one's for the women. Uh, the black one is for the men. And then we also uh, got another like blue uh, and dark blue nano. And I'm not really feeling that one to be, be quite honest. I wouldn't purchase that one. Um, I do have a lot of like colors that would match that but for some reason the color scheme is just not doing it for me um some other new stuff we got uh we got some new rogue short handle speed ropes which i might end up picking up one of these i use i use the sr1 and my rope has actually been breaking the rogue sr2 just also dropped there's two sr2 as well as the sr2s so the sr2s is the short handle the sr2 is the normal handle i like the short handle um ropes myself just because of the way that i hold the ropes um and this one they look pretty cool um as far as colorways go um it's like paint splattered um and it is um metal handles so you're also going to you know it's just going to last a little bit longer so i actually may end up investing in the sr2 um just because i know it's going to be uh, a better uh actually i don't even really need to invest in that one because i also have the um the whatchamacallit the speed rope from what's that brand what is that brand? Uh, uh, let's see. The speed rope from, this is why it's nice that I do these podcasts because I can kind of trip over my words and not really have to worry about editing. Uh, but I have the RPM comp rope, uh, the 3.0, I think that's the one I have, 3.0. Um, and so I technically don't really need to buy another one, but I like the SR2 for like everyday use. Um, if I'm doing a competition or something like that, I would definitely switch over the comp rope just because it's got a faster spin to it. Um, I like the SR2, their SR1, uh, because I can just beat it up. It's lasted a super long time. Um, and most of the time when I'm training, I'm not really worried about competing against somebody else. So. That's why I would, if I was going to upgrade, I would get the SR2 probably most likely. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if RPM was the one that actually built the ropes for Rogue. Um, I, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Um, but yeah, so let's move on from there. Also, if you guys didn't know, Jason Kalipa just dropped his book as well. Um, it's as many reps as possible. I actually want to get my hands on this book. Um, I've been trying to incorporate a lot of Jason Kalipa's, I guess, mindset in regards to what I do on a daily basis. Um, 
and I just really like the AMRAP mentality mindset. I also love the podcast. The podcast is really good as well. Um, has some dope, dope uh, guests that are on there. So if you guys have not checked that out, I would definitely recommend for you guys to check that out. Um, all sorts of different like business people and um, there's not uh, Ben Greenfield. One of the, one of the dudes, uh, from, um, that show with Zoe Deschanel, uh, new girl. Uh, he's a big CrossFitter, Schmitty. I can't remember what his name, regular name is, but Schmitty, uh, he has an episode on there. It's just really interesting, really insightful. Um, I just really like the mindset that Jason Kalipa has. So I'm most likely going to be picking up this book and it's about 15 bucks. So it's not a bad deal. Again, I'll try to make sure to leave links to everything <laughs> down below. And I, as I always mention, uh, some of these links are affiliate links. Um, it helps pay for the different things that I use to create content on this channel. Um, so yeah. Um, also, if you guys missed it, uh, the what ended up happening, this is part two of the Adonis Creed uh, Flyknit Metcon 3s. Essentially what happened was originally Nike uh, put the shoes out, a bunch of people ordered, they canceled their orders, some people got their orders. Um, and then uh, essentially what ended up happening is they ended up shipping some orders later than what was supposed to have been shipped. And then they put shoes back up for sale again, which uh, I think one of the guys from Quest uh, of all places, uh gave me the heads up on that so um i it was kind of torn uh just because i'm already this channel i spent a lot of money on this channel um and i was kind of torn um and it would have been nice to have those those are like my grails right now which i probably will end up purchasing those and i'm willing to spend the extra hundred dollars on those shoes just because i like them so much um but um oh, my chair's down a little bit um, but, uh, but yeah, so they ended up putting the shoes back and they didn't go as fast as they had originally gone. Uh, they were, I think they were up for quite a few days. Um, and so I was going back and forth. I ended up not buying them, but I will purchase them. If you guys want to see a review on those, Joel from as many reviews as possible actually just put out a review on these shoes, a performance review. So I will link that down below so you guys can take a look at that. Um, I have not gotten a chance to look at that yet, but uh, I will be watching that over the course of this week. Uh, a lot of the times with content, just because of the fact that I create content, I, I will save videos for later to watch uh, just because I don't always have the time to watch videos. And today I also have a ton of stuff that I need to do. Um, outside of filming this video. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, this week, um, as far as Nike goes, uh, also on top of that news, Nike, uh, or Joel from as many reviews as possible also leaked some images of the Nike Metcon five, which I'm going to be honest. I do not like the silhouette on the shoe, but as we know with shoes, uh, from my understanding, it's every two years they change or update shoe models significantly. So, uh, as you've seen with the nanos, um, you know, shoes will look similar every couple of years and then the following year they revamp it. So the nano nine is most likely going to look completely different than a nano eight and the nano seven. Same thing with the Metcon 3 and the Metcon 4. They look very similar, uh, but then Metcon 5 looks vastly different. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm not really liking the silhouette on these. Now, we don't know for sure that these are actually going to be 100% what these look like, but there is a good chance that this is what the shoe looks like. And I believe we can trust Joel as far as his intuition with uh, shoe releases and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of got, uh, a nano eight vibe to it as far as like the upper, uh, toe cap area of the shoe. Um, it's just completely revamped, uh, as you guys can see on the screen here. Um, I'm not really feeling it. I'll probably end up getting a pair of these shoes. Um, probably end up again doing a review for you guys to give you guys the four in one. Like I said, I didn't even buy the four XDs. Uh, just because they're very they're similar to if anything, I think the Frasers look way better than the 4XDs um, I don't even wear the Frasers that often. So 
why would I go buy the 4XDs? But I did do uh, a quick overview for you guys for what you guys should expect on the 4XDs. Um, I do want to get the Romaleo 2 or Romaleo 3XDs uh, just because I want to get another pair of lifters. Some people have been complaining about those lifters and said, oh, they're trash. They're kind of, they're too flexible and things of that nature. But I need to stack up on, on weightlifting shoes. So um, yeah, like I said, I'm not really feeling the, the, the Nano 5s. Um, the the upper on the shoe it almost if you guys have ever seen the jordan 15 uh the air jordan 15s that's what they remind me of and i don't know why they remind me of that shoe but those shoes are extremely ugly and i would not be uh i'm just not interested in that shoe and i'm not interested in the nike metcon 5. Uh, but let me know what you guys this thoughts are in the comments below. Are you guys feeling this shoe as far as the first looks go? Um, what do you like about the look of the shoe? I mean, it still holds a lot of the same uh, design principles as like the four, the three, the two, the one. Um, it just looks way different. It looks ugly to be honest. If anything, I'll probably end up getting more Nano uh, fours or not, not four, Nano eights. Um, as opposed to buying the five, but I will buy it for you guys. So um, if you guys like the shoe, let me know down in the comments below. Actually, I have a poll up here. Uh, vote yes if you guys like the new silhouette, vote no if you guys don't like the new silhouette. All right, so moving on from there, moving on from there, we got some other interesting news this week. Um, Something interesting that I didn't know was something I thought this would be a, a, too general for them to do. But uh, as of January 10th, uh, we know that CrossFit has officially trademarked the word sanctionals. Um, and this is from uh, Morning Chalk Up. A lot of the topics that we have for today are from Morning Chalk Up. If you guys have never heard about Morning Chalk Up, they have some really good articles on what's going on in the world of CrossFit, kind of similar to this channel. Um, but as of, uh, so back in September, 2018, so this has been in the works for quite some time. I think actually you've known, well, yeah, maybe after about the time of, we heard about the updates to the games, uh, CrossFit filed to trademark sanctionals and was approved as of January 10th, 2019. Um, and the word sanctionals comes from combining sanctioned and regionals together. Uh, Longtime fans will notice a similarity to the now extinct sectionals, which was done away with in 2010. So if you guys remember back in the day, Reebok had sanctionals. Uh, so it was the open, uh, I think from the open, then it would go to sanctionals and then from sanctionals, it would go to regionals and then from regionals, it would go to the games. Um, since that time, I can't remember what year exactly, but they got rid of sanctionals. I think sanctionals would have been cool to have. Um, well, I guess now we do have sanctionals, so, but there are different events that are taking place uh, across the world and it's not all happening in the same week. Um, but so we kind of are bringing that back with these new events. So I guess in some essence, what's going on now isn't actually anything new from what we've experienced as far as the game's format. It's just CrossFit now is taking their hands off of what's taking place and they're just more of like an advisory board um, certification board for what takes place in the sport of fitness or the sport of CrossFit. Um, now, um, they said, uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, so according to the application, the mark was filed for entertainment in the nature of competitions in the field of fitness, entertainment in the nature of sports competitions, entertainment services, namely an ongoing series featuring sports competitions provided through cable television, video on demand transmission, and the internet. And this is an interesting thing just from the standpoint of the fact that there's a lot of other sports that use the word sanctionals. So the fact that they were able to trademark this, it kind of seems like it's a little bit of a reach for them to trademark something like this. For them to find new ways to um, create streams of revenue uh, for the brand CrossFit. I guess this is something that they felt that they needed to do. I don't necessarily agree with it, but 
um, you know, just because there's other sports that use that word. So I don't think it's right that one governing body of sport can trademark a word that all sports use. If you guys are a lawyer or any of you guys that watch are lawyers, let me know down below what your guys' thoughts are on that. Do you think that this was right for them to do, that they were able to uh, take a word as general as sanctionals and trademark it, even though that there's other sports that use uh, these types of words? And especially when you look at the nature of the um, application, it definitely seems too general for them to just be trademarking something like this. But I mean, the, uh, Trademark offices, they were able to, or they decided that this was an approvable use case. So I guess this is what, uh, this is the law now. So if you use the word sanctionals without getting prior approval from CrossFit, there's a good chance that you're probably gonna get sued. And then knowing the way that they copyright claims content on my channel, if you put stuff on the internet, you're most likely going to get sued in this manner. So stay safe if you use the word sanctionals. Hopefully they don't copyright claim this video because this is pure commentary. Um, I've been having issues the past year with them claiming my content, which has kind of sucked. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I think the meat and potatoes of today's podcast comes from uh, the fact that we now have the 2019 uh, games rule book which comes after the Dubai Fitness Championships, as well as before Wadapalooza. I believe also the uh, 2019 uh, Sanctionals leaderboard should be updated. Let me double check on that right now. Um, let's see, let's see. <clears throat> yep, wait. Okay, so it does look like the, uh, I guess, Sanctionals uh, leaderboard is open. Um, it's still a little confusing as far as how it operates because we already have the open, um, or the open will be taking place next month, February 21st through March 25th. Uh, but when you look at um, the competitions that are available on the Sectionals leaderboard, uh, actually, let's see, hold on. Yeah, so when you look at the, uh, the competitions that are available to search and sort through, um, you don't see any of the other series available there and it doesn't really look like it's updated too much. I feel like it's it's a little bit rushed. Um, I think they should have waited before they put out the leaderboard for sanctionals because it's kind of unusable. Um, it's kind of pointless right now because it doesn't even tell you how many points anybody has as far as competition goes. But uh, you can search for online through or sort through online qualifier. Uh, oh no, you can't actually search through online qualifier. So it's not even um, set up right. But uh, yeah, that's weird. Not sure why they did that, but uh, we do have the games um, rule book that's available. And as one user said on Twitter, uh, it's just now we, we know another reason that I can't even talk right now, but I'm probably gonna edit that out. Um, but there's a lot of new stuff that's in the policy or in the policies, a lot of new changes that a lot of people will need to be uh, aware of as far as competing, mostly those who will most likely be going to the games. Most of us that are watching this and myself will not be going to the games, but um, there's a lot of interesting things in here. Um, and I think one of a few of the more interesting things that are being released is uh, the different scenarios that one can qualify to go to the games uh, through the open as well as different sanctioned events. Um, now, one of the interesting things is uh, the last scenario. Um, and I think the, so like for example, if an athlete wins multiple sanctioned events um, and the only person that this is most likely gonna qualify, qual qualify for or 
gonna apply to you is Matt Frazier. Um, so they say, if an athlete wins multiple sanctioned events, uh, if an athlete has already received an invite from a sanctioned event and then wins another one, the invite from the later of the two events uh, chronologically will be extended to the next athlete in line on the leaderboard that. Uh, any further invites will also be passed down. For example, if Matt Frazier, who has an invite from Dubai, skips the Open or doesn't qualify via the Open and then wins the Rogue Invitational, his invite for the Rogue Invitational, uh, since it happened after Dubai, will be awarded to the second place finisher. And if the second place finisher let's say Pat Vellner or Patricio Velnino has already been invited or qualified, then the third place finisher will receive the invite and so on and so forth. So it's not gonna be the case where if an individual qualifies for multiple events technically that nobody else will be able to go. But there's also another interesting scenario. Um, <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> and that's in regards to how the open operates. Uh, so I think it's here. So in the event of the top 20 worldwide qualifying spots in the open or sanctioned event invites being passed down, if the next athlete in line has already earned an invite or qualified by other means, then will continue to be passed down to the next athlete in line that has not qualified or yet invited, yet been invited. Um, as a general rule to help you understand how the hierarchy of invites and qualify, qualifications are awarded, national champions qualify first, followed by the top 20 worldwide, and then inv invites from the sanctionals are awarded last. Uh, which is very interesting because then it's almost like you, there's still incentive to participate in the Open and to win the Open to get to the games. Uh, and on top of just qualifying for these other sanctioned events. So if you are, you know, let's say for example, top 10 athlete in the world in 2018, um, you still have a lot of options to qualify and Matt Frazier's not gonna be knocking you out of contention uh, just because he wins all the events, um, which I think that was probably one of the biggest things people were worried about is that like Matt Frazier is just gonna be hopping from event to event to event and just knock a bunch of people out, which that's not gonna be the case. Um, there's also some new updates in regards to like for teams qualifying, uh, ages, teens and masters. Um, also some uh, additional info for equipment. So, uh, so the equipment listed for the open use uh, this year explicitly mentions a concept to rower. Uh, if you recall last year, we reported that two top male scores in 18.1 were invalidated then assessed a penalty for using zybex band rowers so uh you want to make sure that you're using the proper equipment that's a big thing if you have athletes that are actually trying to qualify for the games and here's another big 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 one uh, and this is particularly for affiliate managers uh, people who have athletes at their gym because this statement here isn't just going to affect um, that individual affiliate manager, but it's gonna affect their entire gym as a whole. And here's what it is. Uh, if an affiliate manager approves a workout not performed at their affiliate, uh, that affiliate will lose the ability to validate scores for the rest of the season and potentially in future years. Uh, 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 Morning Chalk Up is saying that this is uh, really in the weeds as far as an update goes. Uh, but I guess apparently this stemmed from a previous issue last year with CrossFit Riviera and just details on that real quick for you. Let me pull up the summary for you guys. Um, uh, this was CrossFit Riviera. They won the 2018 Meridian Regionals and they were disqualified for violating Rule 118, which says that the licensee of record for an affiliate may not compete on any other team than a team from their own affiliate. So essentially, if you can't compete on another team unless your affiliate has no adult members or classes and offers only kids programming, and the licensee of record or the affiliate manager doesn't train at this affiliate. So that's definitely gonna be a interesting one because you have a lot of scenarios where people will work at one gym and then they'll train at a different gym. So I guess they're trying to like cut that out of the picture. Uh, that's my understanding of it. Um, and yeah, that's, those are probably like the more minute details 
Uh, we also have some updates to the uh, uh, prize pool money. Um, and so second place has a $15,000 uh, update as far as prize winning. So if you win uh, a place, second place in the games, you're going to be making $115,000 as opposed to $100,000. Now, um, I think drug testing is pretty much going to be the same this year as it was last year. Um, but the biggest update, and I want to preface this before I say anything, because I feel like this is an opportunity for people to take things out of context and i'm this is just my observations i have no problem with individuals who choose what gender they choose to identify as um, as long as you're not hurting anybody that's fine uh, this is merely purely on a competitive standpoint and i would like to have a discussion with you guys and hear what it is that you guys think um, but uh, this is new this is completely new to the crossfit arena but as of 2019 transgender athletes are encouraged to read the full details regarding um, the policy and participating in competition. But if uh, the essentially the, what the rule is, if a gender an athlete selects for open competition is different than their gender at birth or was previously listed on the CrossFit website, then the selected gender must match the athlete's everyday gender and the athlete must have obtained civil documents with their registration gender identified like a state ID or driver's license. Essentially, you can compete in the open with whichever gender you choose to identify as on an everyday basis. So if you are a female to male uh, transgender athlete, you can sign up in the open as a uh, male uh, athlete. If you are a male to female, you can sign up for uh, the male athlete, which is a very, uh, I would assume this was a lot more, would have been a, a lot more of a controversial topic, but it seems like not a lot of people have been talking about it. Um, there was an article that kind of gave more of an insight into what Greg Glassman's thought has been on this policy. And here's, I will quote what you quote, what he says, as opposed to just summarizing. Uh, and the question, uh, okay, so here we go. He says, we've got no interest in excluding anyone. And this is not my blank issue. My issue is blood sugar control and chronic disease. That's what I care about. I don't care if you are LGBT or Q. I honest to God don't care. And so what I want to do is just do that thing that everyone else does. I don't want to be groundbreaking or discriminatory. And this is kind of, um, this is in lieu of uh, other sports that ha that are currently allowing transgender athletes to competing. Like for example, uh, I think it was in Australia, there was a uh, male to female weightlifting athlete uh, who was a weightlifter the, the entire time, but transitioned uh, to a female and then competed as a female and then qualified for the Commonwealth Games. Um, and so I guess Greg Glassman wants to kind of not discriminate uh, in regards to how athletes choose to participate in the sport of CrossFit. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, there's always been transgender athletes within the world of CrossFit. Uh, I can't remember how long ago it was, but earlier on, when I started doing CrossFit, there was one individual, I can't remember her name, but uh, she was a male to female uh, CrossFit athlete, and she was trying to compete as a uh, female CrossFit athlete. And it was a big thing that um, essentially, I think there was a hard stance on that um, where they were just like, no, that's not happening. They were kind of sticking to biology uh, for lack of a better term. Um, you, you have to compete with the gender that you were born as. And um, my stance on the matter is is I definitely do applaud um, Greg Glassman for being as inclusive as possible with regards to um, having, an, I guess, an open policy as far as uh, division competition. Um, and there are new stipulations in regards to testosterone levels with 
competing as a male or a female. So like if you're a female to male transition athlete, your total serum count for a 12 month period must be under like uh, 10, what is it? It must be under uh, 10 uh, nanomoles per liter for at least 12 months. Um, that's like the general rule. So it, it's gonna be interesting in that regard, just because uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, female to male, male to female, transgender athletes that want to compete um, in their respective or their chosen um, uh, gender. And, you know, I, I, I don't I don't have a problem with it per se. Um, I think there are complications in regards to, I, I think to some degree it actually does, um, it definitely does, I feel dilute the competition a bit. And here's my argument because of the standpoint of, can we truly say that it's a true competition of the fittest male and the fittest female in the regards of an individual choosing to decide what gender they want and then competing in that gender. And I think it does compromise the competition just a bit, uh, just because of the nature of if you have an athlete, you know, who's been living as a male most of their life and, um, you know, they've already been past puberty. There's going to be some advantage in regards to competition as far as bone density, muscle mass, things of that nature that a, a female competitor who's competed as a female and lived as a female for most of their life hasn't changed, uh, will not have. So as that male comes into the female landscape of competition, uh, I definitely do feel that there's going to be some um, controversy in the matter. Um, I definitely do think to some degree it might um, weaken the claim of, of um, fittest male or fittest female. That's just my opinion. I mean, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. I think people should be allowed to do what they want to do. I would prefer, in my opinion, that um, the, the division stay as chosen gender. That's just my two cents. Um, but, you know, kudos to CrossFit for, for wanting to expand the brand. I think from a brand standpoint, I definitely do understand that in order to get more people to participate in their sport or in CrossFit, they need to be as inclusive as possible, which I think has definitely shown itself in regards to the changes of the format of the games, because most people, when you think about it, most people aren't getting into CrossFit uh, to be like Jason Kalipa, to be like Matt Frazier, to be like Rich Froning. Um, over time, they may see that and be like, hey, I want to compete as well. But initially, for a lot of people, they just want to get healthy. They just want to get more fit. They just want to not be sick anymore. So um, I think the more you try to um, champion, the more you try to be as inclusive as possible as who can participate in CrossFit, <laughs> Um, I think the, the more chances you have to exposing your brand to more people and expanding the brand of CrossFit to more people. Now, with regards to competition and the sport of CrossFit games, I don't know. Um, I, I, I mean, I like a lot of the changes that are taking place. I'm not sure 100% if I 100% agree with it. Um, and that's coming from the standpoint, again, I have no problem with people choosing whatever gender they want to choose. You could be male, you could be female, you could choose whatever pronouns you want to choose. It's your life, do what you want. Um, I have my convictions, you have your convictions. Um, and I have nothing against them. Uh, I have no reason to be upset or hate anybody of whatever gender they choose. But these are just my opinions as far as competition goes. And I think it's the same thing with every sport. Um, there's going to be advantages and disadvantages in regards to each gender. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this, this new year of CrossFit games and, and all these changes as we see changes taking place literally on a month to month basis as competitions are taking place. I think the 2019 season going into the 2020 season, there's going to be a lot of just hiccups, a lot of things that, uh, CrossFit as a brand, as well as these other events, um, are going to hit as far as like roadblocks and hiccups and things like that. So, um, but at the same time, like I'm super stoked, especially because 
there's going to be more brands that are going to be involved so more reviews um, athletes are going to be able to actually support themselves i think i've said this before but um, i think the changes are good overall i mean not like every single change but i think overall the changes are going to be good uh, for the brand of crossfit um, as well as for the people of crossfit uh, but let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. Do you think that uh, this change to the gender policy is going to have a significant effect on competition as far as do you think other athletes will will uh, will be able to impact the leaderboard? Um, I think we may end up seeing some changes in regards to um, maybe the female leaderboard. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how things play out. And I know it's, this is probably going to be another controversial uh, podcast episode, uh, but it's it's I think it, it creates conversation and that's what I want. Um, this is not from a negative standpoint or anything like that. This is purely to, to talk about what's going on in the world of fitness as well as to you know communicate for you guys, for you guys to communicate your thoughts because there's a lot like, for example, with the, the CrossFit uh, Instagram. I don't even think you can comment on the CrossFit Instagram posts, posts as of this year. Uh, but let me double check that right now in real time. Look at that. What other? Uh, let's see. Yeah. So for the new uh, CrossFit posts for the CrossFit uh, Inc. Uh, Instagram page, you can't comment on anything. Um, so I don't know if they're going to change that over time, but it's been like that for the last, I would say, uh, year, uh, maybe in, as of, um, December, maybe I'm not sure. Um, but, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's a, what a time to be alive. Uh, I will say that, um, I'm looking forward to the changes. I hope you guys are too. I hope you guys are looking forward to another week of training as I am as well. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh, again, uh, make sure to check out the links down below. Like I said, some of them are going to be affiliate links um, just because, again, that helps with improving the channel as well as um, upgrading things to help create better content for the channel as well as getting product for the channel for, to review for you guys. Um, and as well, uh, leave your thoughts down below as far as uh, today's topics. Um, are you looking for the new Nano, the new uh, Metcon fives. Are you looking forward to, um, the new changes to the CrossFit games format? Um, what things are sparking interest in your mind? Let's debate and talk down below. I would love to continue that conversation. Um, also, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you, if the last episode was your first episode watching, uh, and you're watching again and you still aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe guys. Uh, because like I said, I've got some really good content that you guys are going to want to enjoy with uh, progress on the new uh, video series that I'm creating for you guys. Uh, I think first episode should be up uh, first week of February. I'm going to try to shoot for that as far as like production and post-production and things like that. So make sure to subscribe for that. Uh, and yeah, guys, I'm going to keep it there. Keep it short, simple today. Well, not really short, simple. Uh, I'm going to try to set up a uh, pot audio version of this podcast. Uh, you guys obviously won't be able to uh, see the things that are taking place in the uh, like in the video podcast. But at least if you're you know driving, you guys can listen to, you know, updates, things of that nature that are going on in the world of CrossFit. Um, and hopefully I'm going to do the same thing with the uh uh, interview series as well. So that'll be also an audio experience for you guys. So guys, with that, I'm going to end it here. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and yeah, guys, as always, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. Uh, as I drink this coffee right now, this is David, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.